Welcome to the Juniper Tree Podcast. The JTP is a healing ministry promoting healing through God's Word. The Word is alive and active, and study of His Word can bring whole healing through His holiness. Now here's Pastor Michael with this week's message. There she is, Miss Persia. The title of the message today is, There She Is, Miss Persia, as we go into Esther again. It was the night of the playoffs years back. I was watching the Broncos get slaughtered by the Patriots. Ugh. Then after getting fed up with that, I decided to watch a little bit of the Miss America pageant. Of course, Miss America is held in New Jersey, where I was from. We saw women from all over the country answer questions be paraded around in evening gowns, and thank God I didn't see the swimsuit competition, as I don't desire to look upon that with my eyes. At the end, Miss Wisconsin was crowned Miss America. Beauty pageants have a personal place in where I lived, New Jersey, where they took place every year in Atlantic City. And I was also part of promoting and creating them. Not the ones you saw on TV, but we actually had beauty pageants at the nursing homes that I worked at. We called volunteers in to donate their time to do hair and nails. We went to stores and families looking for donations of evening gowns and flowers. I spent a good deal of time getting programs ready as well as decorating the dining room with balloons and arches as many families attended. It was a great day for the participants, as once out of every year, they were dolled up and made to look beautiful, then would be escorted and wheeled down the runway. The crowds of family members and staff would cheer, and the newspaper would be there taking pictures and interviewing contestants. The pageant was always so rewarding, and it would end with a queen being crowned. And that queen would attend events during the year and support other residents in the community as a Miss America would for her country. But where did beauty pageants begin? The interesting thing is they began in Persia during the time of Esther. And today we're going to learn about the first beauty pageant in our sermon. Esther chapter 2 starting in verse 1 says, Later, when King Xerxes' fury had subsided, he remembered Vashti and what she had done and what he had decreed about her. So after four years, he began to mourn over his stupid decision. The stupid decision his court had helped him up to come up with. Which, remember, if you were part of Xerxes being downcast, then you could end up at the end of an impaling spear Remember, this guy wanted to party and he wanted to be happy. He did not like being upset. They come up with a clever idea which could get them to escape death. Verse 2 says, Then the king's personal attendants proposed, Let a search be made for beautiful young virgins for the king. Let the king appoint commissioners in every province of his realm to bring all these beautiful young women unto the harem at the citadel of Susa. Let them be placed under the care of Haggai, the king's eunuch, who is in charge of the women, and let beauty treatments be given to all of them. So we learn about the Persians. They gave us the first Pony Express, and according to studies at the University of Pennsylvania, they gave us wine, the invention of bricks, games like backgammon and polo, and now we see they gave us the first beauty pageant. We're going to take women out of 127 provinces. We're going to clean them up over a year. We're going to give them spa treatments every day, make them smell great, massage them in oils and perfume. They will parade in front of you in all of their beauty, and you can figure out which one's the best and make her your queen. What do you think about that, Xerxes? So, what would most typical men say about this? Hmm, I don't even need to answer that. Verse 4. 
Then let the young woman, the young woman who pleases the king, be queen instead of Vashti. This advice appealed to the king, and he followed it. Sounds good to me. Then Xerxes became the first judge of a beauty pageant. Verse 5. Now there was in the citadel of Susa a Jew of the tribe of Benjamin. He's coming into play now, one of my favorite people in this. A Benjamin named Mordecai, son of Jair, the son of Shimei, the son of Kish. Mordecai, a Babylonian name, in a Jew in the tribe of Benjamin. This will come into play later. His grandfather Kish was taken by Nebuchadnezzar to Babylon. Verse 6. Who had been carried into exile from Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, among those taken captive, with Jehoiakim, king of Judah. Mordecai had a cousin named Hadassah, which we will hear about, whom he had brought up. She had neither, neither father nor mother. This young woman, who was also known as... Esther had a lovely figure and was beautiful. Mordecai had taken her as his own daughter when her father and mother had died. So we learn about Esther. She was an orphan and her family was probably killed by the Babylonians. We don't know that, but there's a good likely chance. Uncle Mordecai adopted and took care of her for years. She's not just a lovely figure like Vashti, the Holy Spirit notes she's beautiful, hubba, 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 is what it says here in the verses. God takes an orphan and will use her in a mighty way. I always tell my daughters they are capable of doing so much in their lives and not to look at their past circumstances. There are so many pastors who were orphans. They were adopted. Some of them were almost aborted and unwanted in their brokenness. They became great leaders who desired after the souls of men and women for God. We should never let our past dictate our futures. Verse 8 says, When the king's order and edict had been proclaimed, many young women were brought to the citadel of Susa and put under the care of Haggai. Esther was also taken to the king's palace and entrusted to Haggai, who had charge of the harem. She pleased him and won his favor. Immediately he provided her with beauty treatments and special food. He assigned to her seven female attendants, selected from the king's palace, and moved her and her attendants into the best place in the harem. So Haggai thought Esther was one of the best in the 127 providences because God was moving sovereignly in this circumstance. Verse 10 says, Esther had not revealed her nationality and family background because Mordecai had forbidden her to do so. God is working sovereignly in Mordecai as well here. He forbids her to say that she's an Israelite or a Jew. She also did not tell Xerxes she was Jewish. God's working sovereignly in this situation. No one will know that Esther is Jewish for many years. In verse 11, it says, Every day he walked back and forth near the courtyard of the harem to find out how Esther was and what was happening to her. He's a good man raising her, looking in on her to make sure she was well. That would be making sure my kid is okay and she's well in the Lord. Though sometimes our daughters or our children are far away from us, I sometimes pace around quite a bit concerned over my daughter's well-being. Verse 12 says, Before a young woman's turn came to go into the king's Xerxes, she had to complete 12 months of beauty treatments prescribed for the women, six months of oil, of myrrh, and six with perfumes and cosmetics. So the women had a year of spa treatments. And all the women of the church say, Amen. Question to the ladies. How many of you would love to get a 365-day spa excursion and just be pampered and massaged on a daily basis? These women spent their days bathing in warm tubs, relaxing in steam rooms, which were the steam rooms at the time. 
Massage daily with oils, perfumes, and cosmetics. They were beautified and made to look good, smell good, have soft skin. Every day was filled with oil of Olay. 13. And this is how she would go to the king. Anything she wanted was given her to take with her from the harem to the king's palace. So they allowed them to pick out of the garments an evening gown, bathing suit, dress for the competition, which gave them their originality and flavor to the contest. Verse 14. In the evening she would go there and in the morning return to another part of the harem to the care of Shagaz. Shashgaz. That's a hard word to say. The king's eunuch who was in charge of the concubines. She would not return to the king unless he was pleased with her and summoned her by name. One night with the king, then off to the harem. It was a very lonely life. And though they were taken care of well, they had never seen the king ever again after that. He was definitely a bad judge. Verse 15. When the turn came for Esther, the young woman Mordecai had adopted, the daughter of Uncle Abihail, to go to the king, she asked for nothing other than what Haggai, the king's eunuch, who was in charge of the harem, suggested, and Esther won the favor of everyone who saw her. This is a woman who didn't need to cover her face with makeup, no rouge, no fake eyelashes or mascara. She was what you would call, um, what do you call that? The Holy Spirit says a natural beauty, a bombshell, a hubba hubba hubba, no perfume, no nothing. Verse 16. She was taken to King Xerxes in the royal residence in the tenth month, the month of Tibet, in the seventh year of his reign. We went from, at the beginning of the chapter, the fourth year of his reign, now we're in the seventh, three years have passed now, and Esther has arrived. God is keeping time of everything. He keeps time of everything. Verse 17. Now the king was attracted to Esther more than to any other woman, and she won his favor and approval more than any other virgin. So he set a royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. The women had been paraded in front of him, the judge, the swimsuits are done, the column competition is over, the questions have all been asked, the nightgowns have been hung up, and a new queen has been crowned. There she is, Miss Persia. There she is, Miss Persia. There she is, your ideal. The dreams of a million girls in a hundred twenty-seven provinces who are more than pretty may come true in Asusa City. Oh, she may turn out to be the queen of femininity. There she is, Miss Persia. There she is, God's ideal. With so many beauties, she'll take the kingdom by storm. With all her Persian face and form, there she is, walking on air she is, fairest of the fair she is, Miss Persia right there. Verse 18, and the king gave a great banquet, Esther's banquet, for all his nobles and officials. He proclaimed a holiday throughout the providences and distributed gifts with royal liberality. When the virgins were assembled a second time, Mordecai was sitting at the king's gate. But Esther had to keep the secret of her family background and nationality, just as Mordecai had told her to do, for she continued to follow Mordecai's instructions as she had done when, she was when he was bringing her up. Esther will not tell anyone, including her husband, that she's Jewish. This will work in God's sovereign plan later on. Now, to close out, Christian ladies, remember what 1 Peter 3-4 through says, your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as elaborate hairstyle and the wearing of gold jewelry or fine clothes. Rather, it should be that of your inner self, 
the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. Esther is that type of woman, beautiful on the inside as well as on the outside, a godly woman who won favor with all those around her. Miss America is not just based on beauty, it's a contest based on beauty, talent, ability, intelligence. Women who are beautiful are the ones who have a good and godly soul. They don't need to be adorned with things, but naturally beautiful in a godly way, which the Bible says is of great worth in God's sight, and that should be the most important opinion other over any man in the world. God will use this gifted and godly woman to change the course of a nation. God can use a good, godly woman to change a community or even change the world. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you and praise you for this great message today. I ask, Lord, that you just bless those who are listening today. Lord, we need godly men in this world, but we also need godly women. We need more Esthers in this world. We need more Proverbs 31 women in this world. Would you do that, Lord? Would you provide us with women who will surrender to you, who will walk with you, who have good souls, who have incredible spirits, and who surrender their lives and follow the beautiful servant Jesus each and every day. Thank you, Lord, for those Esthers in the lives of us. We give you praise for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to the Juniper Tree Podcast. The JTP, again, is a healing ministry promoting healing through his word. If you liked what you heard today, please like and subscribe. And thank you very much for listening to the JTP, where we bring holiness, his holiness, to bring wholeness. God bless you.